I was a left-handed dyslexic kid in Alaska who grew up in the 70s. So if that's not enough. So this one time, we're going on a field trip. It's field trip day, and I'm 10, right? And if you grew up in the 70s, you remember those old computers? They were like as big as this room. They were like as big as a house. So we're all going to visit the supercomputer, okay? I've told this story on the fish. Um, now this computer is gonna tell us all what we're gonna be when we grow up, okay? All we have to do is answer some questions, right? So we all get in, we're all excited, we're in this, we're in this line and you know, all the kids are really excited and when everyone's done answering the questions, this machine is gonna print out a document for each kid based on the information entered and it's gonna tell them what they're gonna be when they grow up. And they're really excited as they're getting their results, right? They're told they're gonna to be doctors and lawyers and firefighters and veterinarians and, and all these sorts of things. There's like a list at the bottom of each kid's page with you know, just different career options for them. So I get my sheet of paper back. There's no list at the bottom of my page. There's only one line one option, one choice. The results of the supercomputer predict my destiny in bold letters. Insulation installer. <laughs> oh, 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 God. I'm 10. Now luckily I know what insulation is because my dad's a construction worker. And I remember the times I've accompanied him to work and he'd be like, don't jump into that stuff. If you jump in there, you'll be itchy the rest of the day. I'm like, that's it. That's my future. Installing itchy, squishy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is my little heart was broken that day. Because not only did I feel misunderstood by all the adults in my life, now the supercomputer doesn't even get me. But it went back to what it always went back to. Who I was was shameful. By God, I was going to spend the rest of my life proving everybody wrong. <laughs> so I'm like, I know how to deal with this. I know how to make myself feel better. I'll go into radio. I'll get a big microphone and then everybody will hear me. <laughs> and they did. But then there were other people that were freaked out about it, you know. And then it caused a whole other barrier of people not really knowing who I was. More false self. It doesn't mean I don't love what I do. It just took me a long time to understand one of the reasons I started doing it. Part of it was codependent indirect communication. I can't talk to you face to face, but I can talk in a microphone and then you'll hear me, right? Mm -hmm.